Governor Murphy today signed the largest state budget in New Jersey's history, $50.6 billion, being touted by Democrats for raising no new taxes, making a full pension payment, and delivering property tax relief. But it's also faced a litany of criticism over the fast-tracked process, hundreds of last-minute pet projects, and massive spending. Senior political correspondent David Cruz was at the bill signing. This is potentially the single greatest budget in New Jersey history. Absolutely, no doubt. They crammed into the library at Cranford High. That's all she wrote, folks. Yeah. The governor, assembly speaker, and Senate president, among others, to hug and to congratulate one another for hammering out a $50 billion spending plan that managed to fund real priorities and pet projects, all couched in the theme of local tax relief. We've done three things at the same time that they said could not be done. Deliver historic relief of, on affordability, invest aggressively in the future, and be fiscally responsible. At just over $50 billion, the budget includes the $2 billion in direct tax relief in the so-called anchor program, $2 billion for schools construction, a second consecutive year of full pension payments, that got some applause from labor leaders, in a room stacked with staff and other members of the nonprofit world, many recipients of state funding. I guess the budget did really well, because look at all the people who are here have benefited from it, right? <laughs> and still, on top of it, we're maintaining more than a $10 billion plus surplus. You know, the governor mentioned that the last administration, when it ended, was less than $500 million. We actually passed budgets with $300 million. Think about that. There are people in this room who put in budget asks for more than $300 million. A $10 billion surplus on top of that, juiced by robust tax collection and billions in federal COVID relief funds control of which the parties agreed to share along the same lines as last year's budget, something that was a sticking point during budget talks. This was Senate President Nick Scutari's first budget as boss of the upper chamber. The fact that you're the Senate President and you can say yay and nay to a lot of things, um, how did that change your approach to how you enter all these negotiations and stuff? Uh, it, it made it a little easier. <laughs> when you have a uh, kind of a veto-ish type position on things. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was an interesting process for me. On the other hand, Republicans, again in the minority, were left to rail against what they said was an opaque process from budget hearings to floor votes, which left others in the caucus lamenting what they said was a lost opportunity. We've heard it from the witnesses that they can't determine, make a determination because they haven't seen the details yet. We haven't seen all the details yet. In fact, they're here in this packet that we just received less than an hour ago. We could have done so much more. The, the, the political theater, the talking points, the symbolism about the anchor program, the sales tax holiday, they may make you feel good about yourselves, but your rebates don't go out until a year from now. The sales tax holiday is really sad in my view. But on the morning of the budget signing, their points were muted and moot. Today was about the majority inking a spending plan that made most of those on this side of the aisle happy and left others hoping to say, I told you so, one day soon. I'm David Cruz, and J Spotlight News.